Welcome everybody. So I'm just going to wait um, for a few people to join. Today is um, a very special day. Um, this topic is, you know, many of the Instagram topics that happen are things that I actually need for myself. They are questions and thoughts and confusions that have been there in my experiences and I kind of am waiting for maybe the time and space to sit down and solve it. And then I set up and I know there's a session and I'm thinking of the topic and I was walking past the airport and the bookshop which is my favorite place anyway and then I see Daniel Kahneman's book and he writes on basically the whole lateral thinking kind of and the automatic brain and his book was called The Noise and the moment I saw that book I said oh, this is a topic that I have needed for myself to be able to recognize what is the signal what is the noise so that my decisions in my life my actions my words to people come from the signals from my brain not from my noise and so i saw this and immediately i said okay so this session this setting up this kind of goal just makes that pot that was boiling slowly simmering come to that full boil and today's session is a result of that today is also the birthday of a very very dear friend of mine Pareta Mashu and so I want to wish her a happy birthday from me and from everybody else and also for all of us to recognize that around us are those people who are unconditionally with us. They could be your parents, it could be sibling, it could be some friends. And we very often may even take them for granted. And yet when, and then when we get caught up with the noise in our head and it overtakes our life, and when that noise clears, all that fog and mist away from it clears, it's these people who are still there. And for me, Parita Mashu is one of them. So thank you for being there in my life. Happy birthday. And um, I hope and I know that all of you have such people in your lives as well. So the signal and the noise is important. Why is it important? It's important because our entire life, be it our actions, our reactions, little steps, big steps, decisions that we take come from signals, impulses, electrical impulses from our brain. These impulses, when are the healthy, good ones, that's the signal. When we pick the signals and we act towards those signals, we reach the goal that we wanted in our lives. We are happy. We feel fulfilled. We feel in balance emotionally, in relationships, as well as achieving professionally or skill-based things in our lives. And when these, unfortunately, along with these electrical impulses that are our signals that will take us to our goal, are other electrical impulses that are also impulses so sound the same, but these are not the clear correct signals. They are noise. And this is, sometimes the noise becomes more frequent and the noise is louder and 
the noise makes us rush into an action. And then we do these little, little steps every time instead of following the signal. We follow these, this noise and little, little steps. And then there comes that point where you suddenly stop and you turn back and look. And you say, but my goal is over there. That's where I want it to be. How have I reached here? Where is this point that I have reached at this point? And that's what happens. You follow the noise and what you wanted in your life doesn't happen. Who you wanted in your life is not around you. You're not happy. You're not physically healthy. And rather than looking and saying, what can I change from within me? What steps can I change? Even now to change and correct my direction, we just feel helpless. We feel out of control and we say, he, she, the world, they are responsible. So at wherever point you are in life, beginning your goals, having goals set, it's valuable to recognize the signal from the noise. Because when you follow the signal, you will reach where you want. Even if you are like me, midpoint of your life, and you're turning back and you're saying, are like I'm not where I want it to be. No, nothing lost. Reevaluate, recalibrate, recognize signal and noise and follow clearly the signal. And so let's go on with little little steps to understand what is the signal? Why is this signal there? How to recognize the difference and then when you recognize the difference what to do about it and then what's the result if you corrected it and followed the signal the signal melodious clear <laughs> from circuits of our brain that we want to detect. The noise is random, chaotic stuff that interferes with the signal. Why do we have a signal and noise? Why do we want to recognize the difference? And how to recognize the difference? Why do we want to recognize the difference? Because the signal is the correct one. Signal is the healthy one. Signal takes you where you want to go. And the noise takes you completely in another direction. And your life is no longer in your control. Why do these signals and noise come? For that, a little bit look at where they are coming from. Our brain. Now, our brain has two parts. One is the part that controls thought and the other is the part that controls our physiological experiences, controls the five senses. So, if I want to see and understand which part of my brain is giving me this melodious signal? Which part of the brain is giving me this random, unwanted fluctuation that's interfering with the signal? If I want to see why, how, to see the difference, what is the difference, what's it coming from, a little bit look at the brain, which is our brain. It's not difficult to get it. The brain is full of neurons, nerves that form many circuits. But functionally, it's divided into two broad areas. One is the automatic brain. The automatic brain, as the name suggests, is not in our control. 
it works automatically and its input and language is that only of the five senses. So when you say, I see this, you go to this brain. The other part of the brain, the neocortex, is the thinking brain, only thought. What I think, what I learn, what I know. Originally, the Lazarus model was predominant in our understanding of the brain. In today's world, it is the James Lang's model of understanding how these two brains correspond to each other. So the or the James Lang model states that first everything, like there's an event that happens around me, its first response comes from the automatic part of the brain, which means the input goes not as to what is happening. The input goes as to what do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What's the visual? What's the movie? That goes and in this automatic brain, it gives us physiological experiences, which means you can have heart palpitation. You can have trembly, trembly feeling. You can smile. Tears can come. Your eyes can widen like this. This is what happens first. To this group of physiological experiences, we give a name. We call it an emotion. We say, yeah, this is this group when it happens together, we call it fear. Jab, when you start feeling heavy, eyes may say liquid is coming, water is coming from the eyes, your lips are going like this. We give it the name sadness. If you have your cheeks going upwards, twinkle in the eye, there's a good, like a full, full feeling, we give it the name happiness. After this physiology, we give it the name and then a thought is created. Oh, I am happy because she did this. I am sad because she did this, right? The old model or the old thought theory was ki our thought is predominant. We used to think earlier is that we first think. I first think I don't like this particular book. And then I get a feeling of uh, either disgust or superiority or you know it's junk. And then it gives me physiological. Or for example we would say we see something and we say, oh, I am afraid. We know this is dangerous. Like I see a tiger and my thought is, I know this is dangerous. Then I feel fear. Then I get all those trembling and eyes wide and trembling and everything mouth dry. But that's not actually what happens, right? What actually happens is you see a tiger. First, you get palpitations, trembling. Blah, blah, blah. This is collectively we call fear. This gives us, oh, this is dangerous now, we must take an action. The reason we falsely earlier thought that the thought predominates is because this part of the brain we are conscious of. This whole play that is happening in the automatic, we are unconscious of it. So we didn't even realize it is there. But as advances in psychology, neurology, the human experience happened the realization that it first starts from here and then results into the thought. You know, at Yale, they did some uh, interesting experiments for this. So they took a group of people and they gave them, they, these group of people were individually going to interview another group of people, right, for a job. They were given biodata of everybody. Same biodata was given to everybody, right? Now, this group of people who was interviewing this other group, they were divided into two parts. One of them, every time before they interviewed that candidate, one of them, one group was given a warm bag to hold. The other group was given cold bag to hold. Now, that bag was given for a few seconds, take it away. After that, they had this interview and then they had to answer their inferences. 
Now they were asked, is he intelligent? Will he be, is he a good sales manager? Mm, is he a people's person? Would he be able to be a leader, etc.? One of the questions was, is this person a cold person or a warm person? Right? Now, the interesting thing was, each of these people who were given the cold thing, they called the same group of people cold. Whereas the other group of people who were given the warm stuff to hold just few seconds and then taken away, they called the same group of people warm. So you realize that, you know, we think we are these intelligent thinking beings, but a lot of our decisions which we think we've taken from rational thought are coming from signals, impulses, not we not say signals, impulses from this automatic part of the brain and we don't even realize it. We just realize and we take a decision. We just focus on the end point of it. So once we understand that there are these two parts of the brain, this one both give electrical impulses, both give signals and noises. Let's see how. The automatic part of the brain, its language is five senses. The automatic part of the brain is not in our control. The thinking part of the brain, language is thought, emotion, story, summary, learning. This one is in our control. That's the key difference from these. Both are constantly working. Both have electrical impulses coming from there. Now let's see what happens further. What is the next drama that is happening here? So now if you see this, in this automatic brain are two parts. One part is you see the blue one, it's the unhealthy. In the homeopathy, we call it the state. It is the one which has all the prejudices, biases, effects of traumas, if small, big, effects of our environmental influences in our childhood, friends, issues, failures, disappointments, success, all that is part of this, forms this circuits in this unhealthy state. In this automatic is also the healthy, the stimuli or the impulses that are creative, that are actually often creative leaps, quantum leaps of creativity come from this part of the brain. The neocortex, the new brain, that again has two parts. One is the messy, unhealthy, problematic thoughts, which originate from, remember that unhealthy state in the automatic brain, because that's where it is primary. The whole mess is primary here. And then this comes into thoughts in this neocortex, and that's the unhealthy, messy thoughts. They also keep giving electrical current in charge. In this same neocortex is an is pure thought. Pure thought is the healthy, good, clear. It is where so many advances, so many things that are happening in life, that our world still exists and functions despite of so much chaos and mess is because of the existence of these two healthy things, the creative impulses and this pure thought impulse. So, as you can see, and if you can see clearly how these two parts of the brain, while working parallelly, have both an unhealthy part and the healthy part. The unhealthy in the automatic part of our brain which is experienced by our five senses results in all the unhealthy thoughts. So now once you see this, it's obvious of course you would have figured the correct signals will come from that creative leap area and pure thought area, right? And the unhealthy state 
or the noise will come from the unhealthy state and the thoughts the bad the the chaotic thoughts not bad but chaotic thoughts in this neocortex area just to remind you if you want to understand again clarify for yourself once again how does that unhealthy state that original unhealthy state originally develop uh, we've done another session on uh, allergies is it you or me and in that session we have explained the neurological model based on pavlov's scientific experiments and adder's scientific experiments how our childhood influences and creates this whole story so that's another thing for you to kind of reevaluate go back to but coming back to where we are our two brains good the healthy the chaotic healthy chaotic both giving electrical impulses now let's see the signal and the noise you can obviously see that noise is impulses that are coming from that unhealthy part from the automatic brains unhealthy state and from the chaotic thoughts that result and that noise felt like in the brain whereas the signals are coming from the creative part of the automatic brain and the pure thought so when the impulses come from that creative part and that pure thought part of that brain that's when they are the clear and the right signals that will result in the success and not this chaotic multiple things that are happening here when the signal from the automatic brain which is the creative part and the signal of pure thought happen together are in sync with each other and we move into action that state of being is called being in the flow this being in the flow is something we've all experienced just take a moment to look back right there are times when you you kind of had a thought whether you call it a thought or an impulse and it just feels like your whole body is alive with it and you take actions and you move ahead and it's like everything happens you know they say it in philosophy i sometimes don't like the cliche but it's there's no other better way to i think say it it's like everything is kind of joining hands to help you do what you want right that moment is like being in the flow it's like nothing else matters every door you need opens everything you need just happens goes in the flow those moments which we've all experienced are like unfortunately very short so fleeting and we very often even forget or you know don't try to hold them because very quickly we shift into the other but that to be or we don't have to be in that we are human beings there's going to be other stuff but recognizing that when it happens being there when it happens floods the body with whole lot of healthy neurochemicals that keep your body and mind in a good it like rejuvenates every cell of your being so when the signal from that creative part of the automatic brain and the signal of pure thought from the thinking brain come together are in the same direction and move in sync and we go towards our goal that's what is called and psychologists have called this being in the flow that's where we want to be it's great fun to be there but 
for that one of the biggest things for us is to recognize the difference between that signal and noise i mean okay now i understand logically ki i need to follow signal i need to not follow noise i understand ki wo signal and noise sound very similar so i may not even be able to make out the difference but if i follow the signal wow my life is different and if i follow the noise my life is different how to see the difference again this is not from any textbook any theory it is based on me looking at my personal experiences and then matching them of course with data from other people's experiences i like you also to when you're listening to this kind of look and see if you can resonate with these moments do uh dm us and tell us if you do recognize this because it will add to our information and help others as well so signal can come as like a thought like a written thing you see in front of you right and it's clear it's definite it's single it's unblurred it can be a sound that sound will be non muffled non confused so the signal has clarity singularity definite unblurred not muffled it can be a visual it can be a sound it can be an visual as an image like you see this has happened you see something or you hear it or you see it as a written thing but either way it's singular clear definite unblurred unmuffled not confused the noise on the other hand hap- when it happens it's like your head is feeling something's happening inside it too fast too jumbled too many inputs no clarity um it feels out of control often at this moment we like feel we have to do something this is the problem in the signal it just feels calm and unhurried you have to do but you will do but the noise just feels like uh, you have to do most important is when the impulse is a noise it is always associated with the physiological because remember the whole noise originates in that unhealthy state in the automatic this unhealthy automatic is linked to all our five senses and our physiological body functions our heart our respiration so what happens is when the impulses are coming from this noise part we are getting physiological symptoms with it like trembling hands cold mouth dry palpitation like a chill or a heat going in the body the head feels heavy very often you realize you're holding your breath and it's like you i have to do something this is noise look back look back and see those multiple times where and you know little in in smaller intensities this is happening all the time in our lives there are those big things big moments we recognize right sometimes in those big moments we look back and say oh shit why did i do that i shouldn't have done it i wish somebody and something could have stopped me only you can stop yourself by recognizing it but there are those many little 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 things we do hundred through the day where the signal comes the noise comes we have these little uh, trembling something happening and we take a quick action it's coming from the noise not from the signal so that's how to differentiate between the signal and the noise another thing that would help us is to there are certain moments you see where this noise 
tends to come more frequently. So knowing those moments makes us more aware to listen for the noise. The first is when a good signal has come, we've decided to move towards the goal, but between the signal and the action comes that noise. I'm just going to go back to it again. Oh, so it's moved ahead. Um, I'm just going to take it so you can see that moment. That moment is there's a signal and I have to move towards the goal. But before the action comes the noise and I don't take the action. I stop, procrastinate, let it go. Second is right in the beginning, before I have to take an action, there's signal, noise. And instead of choosing the signal, I choose the noise and I take the wrong action and then mess is created. The third is when there is a variance. What do I mean by variance? It means you get a good signal from the automatic brain, creative. You get a thought signal from the uh, thinking brain, pure thought, both are the good things, right? But the problem is they are not in sync with each other, which means they are both correct signals, but they are showing you different paths. Because in life, there's not always black and white, right? There is gray. So there can be two paths, both have their goods, their advantages and disadvantages, right? And you have to now take a decision, right? Both come from good, healthy signal, but they are showing you two rastas in front of you. Now, this moment when I have to take a decision is where the noise rushes in, right? And this noise rushes in and it's got this whole physiological, we hold a breath and jump into an action, very often the wrong one at that moment. Rather than recognizing, ki, okay, these are two signals, variance, take a moment, now take a clear, rational decision on at the moment, which is the right one for you, right? So these are the three moments that the, the noise tends to happen more frequently and it affects our life more frequently. So once again, the noise is associated with physiological things, trembling, trembling, palpitation, hold breath, quick action, where a signal is clear, singular, singular. The uh, noise is always many, many coming from different things. The signal is clear, single, definite, unmuffled, unblurred. It happens at three key points. The first being when you have to first take a decision, you have to do something. And you have to move ahead and there's signal and noise and we tend to pick the noise, reach the wrong point. Second is we hear the signal, pick the signal, but now we have to take the action to move towards it. Noise comes in between there and we move or we stop. Usually we just don't take any action. We just stop there, procrastinate, stay where we are stuck, stagnant. Number three. Two signals come, both good. One from this creative leap, the other from this thinking brain. And now, they are, the problem is they are not in sync. If they are in sync, we move in flow. They are moving in two different directions, both valid. Here, we need to take rational decision. Instead of that noise come, uh, we take some decision, usually the wrong decision. At this point, I also want to just show you when we talk about this creative leap what happens you know this creative thing is like that Archimedes or Mendeleev where they were sleeping and they woke up and said Mendeleev said periodic table Archimedes is having his bath soaping himself and he says Eureka and discovered the whole principle of flotation the brain has these multiple neurons which are like connected with some common neurons right now, in this automatic brain, as the electrical impulse goes through, and I'm repeating that for you once again. 
So as you see these different electrical impulses and currents go through these impulses, so they'll go through this one, maybe the next one. But when a impulse moves from one to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, and you notice now suddenly it started at one point and moved to a completely different area in a short span without going through the proper steps to reach there. And that's when it's like, how did we start here and end there? That is those creative leaps, quantum leaps that are basis of a lot of innovation. This is why scientifically they occur. So now going to the next step, right? We've recognized the difference. We've recognized when is the difference. And now comes how to quieten the noise. The important thing here now is how will I quieten this noise? Okay, that's the most important point. I recognized it. I can see it. What to do? To quieten it, to make sure that it doesn't muffle up my signal and I can hear it. Now, luckily, every neural circuit in this automatic brain has a nerve or a neuron coming from the pure thought part of the brain, right? The healthy part of our neocortex. This neuron, as you see it, as you saw the line that came from the top, a clear, nice line, this is inhibitory. It is not something that will make you take an action, but it will stop your action. So that's why philosophers and scientists now say there is no free will. There is free won't. So you can inhibit it. You can inhibit from your thought this jumble. You can't stimulate it, right? So most of the time this inhibitory straight line that you see clear, nice straight line has no electrical impulse through it. When you recognize noise, right, and you pause, and you take, recognize that this is a pure thought recognition, this is noise, you then pass the electrical current through this inhibitory circuit to that noisy circuit and stop any action from there and stop that circuit at that point. And that's what we have in our hands. That's the control that we have in our hands. You know that moment when noise impulses are overtaking you, you recognize it because one of the common ways you will say is, I feel out of control, right? It's not because you're a control freak, but that's how it feels. It feels out of control. And this inhibition in that messy, noisy circuit can bring that control back. So what do you do? First, recognize. Most important is recognize signal and noise. And we told you how to recognize the difference. Once you recognize the difference, pause and start breathing. Remember, one of the things I told you is when we are in that... We stop breathing in that noisy impulse with trembling hands, weak, whatever feeling. We also stop breathing. Now, bre breathing and the respiratory circuit is the only circuit in our automatic brain that we have some control over, right? You can't control your heartbeat. You can't control trembling. You can't control sweating. You can't... So now it's clear. So going back to breathing is the only thing that we have some control over in the automatic. We can't control our urine. We can't control our heartbeat. We can't control trembling, palpitation. But 
You held your breath. It's a result of noise. Start breathing. The moment you start breathing, the electrical current goes in the correct way through the breath circuit. Like a domino's effect, it goes through the rest of those noisy circuits, bringing them down into the correct frequency. In other words, you bring the noisy frequency back to the correct electrical frequency through the breathing. Once you've done that, now you will hear the signal. Because the signal was always there, remember? It just got muffled over, blurred by the noise. So the moment you recognize, pause, breathe, this noise stuff goes away, signal remains. And now you can hear the signal, see the signal, right? And now you take your action. And that action will be the correct one, taking you where you want to go. So I'm bringing you to that point again, how to recognize the noise. We call it the RPDP action, which is recognize the difference from the signal and the noise. We already said, recognize it with its clarity, singularity, definite signal, muffled too much, unblurred, associated with those physiological feelings in the body, noise, then pause. Breathe. Don't act. Pause means you're not act. Breathe because you're holding your breath. And when you breathe in the correct breath, slow, calm, unhurried, like a domino's effect, all the other ones which are now going zoo, 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 will now start all moving in the correct frequency. In other words, the noise will calm down. As the noise comes, the signal is always there. You'll hear it. It was, and you can now see it clearly because simply all that blurred stuff you removed. Now you see the clear signal. Just move ahead, take your actions, and you will go where you want to go. So that was what we wanted to say on this session of Chai Tea with Dr. D. The signal noise, which is part of our daily phenomena, both coming from the two parts of our brain, automatic and thinking, both parts of the brain having signal and noise. You recognize the signal and the noise. You know when to look for the noise, certain areas where the noise tends to come in. And then you know how to stop and muffle or bring down the signal so that your actions move towards the correct thing. As you repeatedly you know, this automatic brain where all the things originate from works with repetition. So as you repeatedly recognize noise and quieten it down and take the signal, you repeatedly recognize the noise, hold, bring it down, take the signal. Gradually, the noise starts reducing, 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 and you are more with the signal, signal, signal. And these signals become more in sync, in flow. And then you're most of the time living your life the way you actually wanted, what you envisaged, what you wanted to happen is happening in front of you, right? So you understand that following creative leaps is also healthy. Following pure thought is also healthy. Just recognizing whether you're taking it from noise or from signal is important. And when they go along the same route and they are there together, you're just flying at that moment. So hoping this session gives you what I know that already making this, planning this session gave me. It's like every minute I'm watching my signal and noise. And honestly, it's great fun. So hoping for you to see, hear, recognize your signals, signals, muffle your noises, and fly forward in the journey of life, healthy, happy, successfully, reaching that goal that you wanted. Um, once again, this is Chai Tea. Please, if you like it, like, share, DM us, send it to other people who you think will benefit from it. And I'm open for questions. If there are any questions at this point, please uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm looking at what the questions are. Do I see any questions here? Um, 
Dr. Charmi, should I ask you to join? So do you see any questions? Am I missing any questions from here? Yes, Dr. Charmi, are there any questions here? So I'm once again saying, would any of you like to share your experience or tell us your questions on this topic? No. No questions? Well, you know, when there are no questions, I sometimes think it means, I mean, I can, I'm, I can think on one hand, maybe I said it all so clearly, but I could think I said it so badly that it made no sense. Now, I need to figure which of these impulses is the signal and which is the noise. So while I do that, we're going to end now and hope you enjoy your time forward and watch your signal and the noise until our next session of Chai Tea with Dr. D on Live Insta. Welcome everybody. Welcome to our session of Chai Tea with Dr. D. And our topic today is the signal and the noise. So I'm just going to wait um, for a few people to join. Today is um, a very special day. Um, this topic is, you know, many of the Instagram topics that happen are things that I actually need for myself. They are questions and thoughts and confusions that have been there in my experiences, 